The common theme amongst many grand strategy games is their commitment to the time period. Games like Romance of the Three Kingdoms, Nobunaga's Ambition, and Crusader Kings 2 are prime examples of this. While being able to unite the land as Ma Tang in Romance of the Three Kingdoms or as Takeda Shingen in Nobunaga's Ambition is enjoyable enough, what about a fantasy setting? This is what the heroic legend of Igorlina is here to provide, a fantasy grand strategy game that takes inspiration from those previously mentioned titles. As a disclaimer, I was given a free code from Hongshu Studios. While I do appreciate the free code, it will not deter me from a fair and honest review. So I'd recommend you to start off with the tutorial and it introduces you to one of the factions called Nubidia in an introductory battle. Uh, after this battle, it'll put you uh, in control of one of the of one of the factions, this one known as Recovery Army, which seems to be the main faction of the game. I'm not sure what it is, but this one seems to be the main narrative. Uh, it basically it, uh, teaches you the basics, this whole tutorial, but the rest is mainly learned through trial and error, uh, as, real, as well as reading the guide that's on the top right. It overall does a decent job, but I think a better tutorial could uh, work better here. Uh, I would say look at Romance of the Three Kingdoms 11 for a great example. The tutorial in that game is amazing. So after the tutorial, I then decided to start a new game, and currently there's 19 factions to play as, all featuring their own heroes, unit types, uh, bonuses, and starting locations, which is pretty awesome. And I know some of these uh, factions may be further expanded to, so it'll be interesting to see what they do there. Um, I ultimately chose Constant uh, for their military bonuses to uh, warrior health uh, to last longer during battle. And one of the heroes, uh, her name is Alithia, uh, looks like this. So uh, anyone who looks like that is, uh, I definitely want them on my side and not against them. So uh, yeah, she's going to be with me. <laughs> so fun fact, each character does have their own uh, biography and some of them are more detailed than others. It's basically is a nice little backstory uh, for the game to kind of set a, a precedence on why they are uh, the way they are. And I actually learned that uh, why she smiles and why she looks the way she does. And it's honestly a pretty tragic backstory. You know, I grew closer just reading the story that she has. And, uh, you know, she's got it rough, but uh, all I can say is I wish her the best. Each faction gets an opening cutscene, which is a pretty cool thing. It's a great way to introduce uh, the world to us a bit and also to understand why the characters are there and what their uh, purpose is. Honestly though, this is really all um, each faction gets from what I've seen in terms of pure cutscenes. There are tar uh, talking scenes, we'll get into those, like there are dialogue scenes, we'll get into those. Uh, but I wish there were more cutscenes of this uh, style like this throughout the gameplay, mainly for hitting like certain milestones or completing a uh, mission. So along with an opening cutscene, uh, you'll also receive a mission to uh, complete. And honestly, I would recommend that you complete them because this is how you can get some uh, much needed money early on, as well as some really strong items to equip on your heroes. Uh, and also, some of the later missions can also uh, get you more heroes, and it also helps to uh, give an idea of what to focus on next. So take it as basically the missions in Total War. Whatever you decide to do, it's imperative that you invest in your cities, because the early game economy can be incredibly brutal. With just how little resources you have, you'll quickly realize just how expensive things are. Uh, investing can also lead to stronger cities and also, uh, depending on your faction, certain special units. Uh, the effectiveness for all actions depends on the attributes of your heroes, and your heroes uh, gain experience and level based on their success. And the key word to that is success, because if they fail at any action, they won't get any experience from it, unfortunately. So once your economy is all set and ready to go, you should also build up your military. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to assign heroes to the army, which you can do uh, in the camp screen. And certain heroes uh, have certain bonuses uh, when using certain units. So some are better with legionary units, some are better with spearmen, some are better uh, with cavalry. And you'll know, uh, it'll list it out telling you what exactly uh, they're good for. And this is... Um, really essential so you can best optimize uh, your army. So as I mentioned before, you can uh, train your units, which is definitely uh, recommended to do so. Uh, they can be upgraded to level 4 with only gold, uh, but after that it requires a certain kind of resources. Uh, you know, iron, wood, so on and so forth. And these can be bought from the store or going through uh, exploration uh, missions. 
So even with a high tier army, you still shouldn't attack cities uh, without destroying the walls first. Uh, unlike other ROTK games or Nobunaga's Ambition games or any other games in general, uh, you'll need to weaken the walls of uh, the places you want to attack first before you send in your army. Uh, so you have to, again, send a hero to do so. So after building up your economy, after building up your army and destroying the enemy walls, it leads to a battle. Uh, the most you can do is uh, 6v6 at the moment, not sure if they'll do more or what the plan is there. Uh, so as you play, you can engage the enemy or you can wait to be attacked. It basically moves uh, within a grid, but it's all real time. Uh, certain units are better against others, basically uh, a standard uh, rock, paper, scissors, as you've seen in other games, uh, with the added of magic and unique units. Uh, so you can really witness some nice sprite work here, and it's really cool seeing the unique uh, officers and uh, seeing the, what their sprites look like. But unfortunately, the combat to me is the weakest element. And it really is because once your units engage, it really just boils down to spamming officer skills. It's not about flanking or really doing anything uh, creative. It really just seems to engage, hit your uh, s skills as, uh, as quick as possible, and uh, rinse and repeat. And some of these skills can be incredibly overpowered, while others are just not good at all I you do need mana to cast but honestly battles are so over uh, very quickly you know some could I, th I think the longest one I had was like uh, two minutes or something like that these go by very fast so after a battle or when defeating a faction you may gain prisoners after the battle uh, so these prisoners can be locked up uh, released or executed um, when you lock them up they can eventually be uh, persuaded um, through interrogations and then once they uh, get through a certain level you'll have a pretty high chance to persuade them to join and some heroes can will only join if you have a certain specific character uh, in your army so once you beat the army on the field uh, you'll move on to a siege battle unfortunately siege uh, siege battles are currently just auto resolve early and I'm not sure if this will be uh, revisited but it definitely should be um, I'd be curious to see what they would do for uh, for walls and see how uh, they can incorporate the battle engine for that. Because um, just having it auto resolve uh, definitely feels like uh, lackluster, honestly. So as you expand, you'll definitely need more heroes to uh, complete tasks and fulfill your army. So along with the previously mentioned uh, prisoners and missions uh, you can do, they can also be searched throughout your territory. Um, most of the heroes that you'll find in your territory will be underwhelming, uh, but some of the times you'll get someone really strong. If another faction's been destroyed, those leaders may be in your territory and you don't know. Or you can get someone uh, that's actually just really strong that is just naturally free. So it's, uh, it's pretty interesting what you can find. Diplomacy also becomes more important as you expand. Uh, you send a diplomat to negotiate an alliance uh, or a trade. So trades are very important uh, to establish your economy. Um, alliances though are more like non-aggression packs and not really like a full-blown alliance. So you can't like set an alliance with someone and team up on another faction. Uh, hopefully that gets expanded upon. Honestly, I think all of the diplomacy needs to be looked at again because it's another weak element in this game. You only have one shot per round uh, in order to uh, negotiate. Like literally, you just say, hey, this is what I want. I'll give you this amount of gold. Even with a high chance of success, uh, you can easily fail. And if you fail, that's it. There's no other chance. What they should do, honestly, if uh, if they revisit this, is they should have it that you your chances depend on your charisma stat. And there's actually a game that's very similar uh, to what I'm proposing, and that is Nobunaga's Rise to Power. Depending on uh, the charisma stat of the character or the officer in that game that you would initiate the diplomacy, would determine how many chances you actually have. So it should it's something I think the de the developers should look into. Another way to gain heroes is through lobbying, and this is basically convincing heroes of other factions to join yours. Uh, my only issue with this is that there's no loyalty stat, so officers can easily be persuaded to join others, and vice versa. Uh, officers that you would think would be loyal to you can actually be converted and will fight for the enemy. Um, I wish there was something to determine how what makes an officer easier to convert than others outside of their level. 
So I didn't mention this, but the artwork is fan freaking tastic. A uh, big reason why I wanted to try this game. Uh, some of the lower officers may not have as much details, but the main ones, ho oh, ho, they definitely do. Um, just like the Alithia chick that I mentioned before. Um, the music is also great too, uh, especially the menu theme. Um, however, there currently is no soundtrack uh, to purchase. So maybe down the road when the game gets uh, more fleshed out, there can be a soundtrack to purchase and I would definitely be a buyer of that. So once this game has officially launched on early access, the commitment has been commendable. Uh, many problems that I had before uh, launch were addressed. Uh, one of them being that the battle speeches would play uh, without the battle pausing, so that got kind of annoying. Uh, there's better uh, early game economy uh, as well, so it's not as difficult. Uh, there's also a higher chance to succeed on tasks, uh, which is nice, uh, so it definitely uh, quickens the pace of the strategy. Um, hopefully, you know, they can, like I mentioned before, add a loyalty stat, and this is wishful thinking here, um, but imagine if there was freaking officer play here. I don't know if that's a possibility, but honestly, if there was officer play, that would change the whole freaking dynamic of this game. I mean, just imagine just playing as my chick Alithia, if you've noticed, that's my favorite character. Um, just like playing as her under constant and just, you know, leaving for another faction and possibly just creating your own faction, creating friendships with others. That would be freaking fantastic. Again, I don't know if it's something that is possible, uh, given the scope of the game and what they're aiming for, but man... If we can get an officer mode, that'd be awesome. So for glitches, I had one hard crash, um, and also I wasn't able to load one of my save games after a minor update uh, happened. Uh, there's also some weird translation issues uh, with the English version, um, which will hopefully get addressed in due time. It is pretty expected for these bugs to be here for an early access title. I've seen better, I've seen worse. So overall, I would definitely recommend to support this game. It's a great price, especially at $12.99. Uh, the graphics are nice, and I definitely love the strategic uh, depth that's in offer. It reminds me a lot of Romance of the Three Kingdoms and Nobunaga's Ambitions, which is always a good thing. If we can get more games like that, the better. Um, however, certain elements need to be addressed, like uh, the battles, as I mentioned before, and the negotiation that needs to be revisited. All the other stuff I mentioned before um, is more just, you know, like with officer play, is more of just like a wishful thinking kind of thing, but would be cool if it's something that they would like to pursue. And that's all the time we have today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Stay safe as always. Thank you for watching. And this is Powerhouse, signing off.